Neuromore Academy, one of Drakenspire's most prestigious schools with over 500 years of storied history. The current headmaster, Julius Claiborne, is a former general who runs our school with military precision and discipline. Our wonderful planet of Neuvest is home to a great many talents in resonetic abilities. And Neuromore's teachers are uniquely qualified in instructing such essential subjects. But while we specialize in resonetic talents, our other subjects are not taught any less thoroughly, and every student is encouraged to explore their unique talents in our extracurricular programs. Newermore Academy guides our students to commit to their studies, keep sound minds, maintain their manners, and most importantly, behave in a manner befitting the reputation of our beloved institution. Extortion, Miss Hovern. Is that really what you're up to now? I wouldn't call it extortion, sir. I simply told the cafeteria cook that I would keep the existence of his pet vermin on the down low if he provided me with an extra brownie or two at lunchtime. It was mutual exchange that neither of us had issues with. <sighs> yes, Judith, that's extortion. Of course he had issues with it. Thank goodness I caught you in the act. Well, why am I the one sitting here in this office, when it's the cook who is keeping vermin pets? I've already talked with Mr. Seabrook, Judith. It's dealt with. And more importantly, none of your business. What concerns me is you. Sneaking around at night, lying to teachers, extorting staff. This is a decidedly concerning trend. Don't you want to be a good example for your sister? Indeed. It must be hard enough for her to be younger than her classmates. For the next month, you are not permitted to attend film club. Do you understand, Miss Hovern? But, sir, I won't be able to see any movies outside of that club. Hence why it's a punishment. Miss Nunatak will check that you aren't seen there. I'll make sure of it. Judith, head back to class, please. Good old Seabrook didn't rat me out, it seems. Brownies weren't the only things I asked him for. Apparently, one of his old classmates from back in the day was really into puzzles. He set up some kind of secret puzzle in the history classroom years ago, and Seabrook never figured it out. Let's see if I can. During the Onyx War, various battles were fought in the Inked Wastes. Some were relegated to land, others underground in the caverns, and many on the Inked Sea. Our fiefdom, Drakenspire, went head to head against the fiefdom of Northburg in a horrid conflict spanning four years. It irrevocably changed our fiefdom forever. Miss Cabrera, no drawing in class. Can anyone here tell me why the Onyx War was instigated? Miss Landerhoof? Yes, ma'am. The Onyx War was started due to Northburg spies sabotaging our resonetic ring production process. Northburg took advantage of this to sell their own rings in order to gain the kingdom's favor. A good summation, Miss Landerhoof. Uh, can anyone else tell me why it was the inked wastes that were chosen as the fateful battleground? The inked wastes is between the two fiefdoms. Plus, it was where we mined our ore for the rings. Excellent, Mr. Strumps. Now, what is it about the inked wastes that make it a particularly terrible place to fight a war? Miss Acre? Oh, yes, Miss Grinsby. Well, the inked waste is a nasty, nasty place full of hard creatures that will gobble you up and suck out all of your blood. Oh, and of course you can't forget to mention the surge, which will suck you down into its deep depths and fill your lungs with tar, its tendrils digging deep into your brain until... That's quite enough, Miss Acre. Oh, quite enough. Are 
unit this semester will be all about the Onyx War. Since it is the most recent major conflict in Drakenspire's history, we will be studying it in depth. And speaking of which, you may have heard tell that a new science teacher will be joining us this year to replace Mr. Mason. His name is Mr. Bagshaw, and he actually worked in the Research and Development Division of the Drakenspire Army. I'm sure he will have plenty to share with you that can enhance your education. <clears throat> anyway, I am now giving you the rest of the period to work on the papers I assigned to you yesterday about the instigation of the war. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Dismissed. The note Seabrook gave me says history classroom. Page number equals number of cave hounds times number of windows plus number of desks. Judith! Greetings! Hello, Sol. Might I ask if the film club will have the honor of your presence today? We are watching Murder in the Depths, a delightful hollow reel that combines Felmorian and Neuvesen directing technique. Additionally, I heard tell that real skeletons were used to depict the bodies of the murder victims. Oh, please refrain from informing any school staff of this fact. I do not wish to get into detention again for my interests. I'm sorry. I just got into trouble with the headmaster. Can't join in film club for a while. Oh, really? I'm simply crestfallen to hear such a thing. I do hope you may join us soon. A new batch of my school-shaped cookies will be awaiting your arrival. <sighs> Deathly delicious, as you always say. <laughs> Indeed, I do! <laughs> you mentioned getting into detention at one point. What was that for? Have I not told you of that incident? Ah, yes, this was from before we knew one another, I believe. In the library's radio room, I and several other students had met up to share our favorite radio shows. I turned the channel to my personal pick. As it went on, a few of the students seemed to become quite frightened. The librarian came in to check on us, and when he heard what we were listening to, well, he immediately took me to the headmaster's office. Unfortunately, I was banned from turning the channel ever again. What exactly did you have them listen to? A series detailing the stories of serial killers. A tag graphic, I must admit, but also rife with educational content. What are you reading there? An autopsy report, that's all. Autopsy? Of who? 
Baroness Belladonna Lattimore, a death from 30 years ago that many would consider suspicious. I am continuing my studies of famous deaths in order to increase my likelihood of becoming a forensic pathologist someday. That is my backup career plan, if my status as a true princess is never officially acknowledged anyway. So you're trying to solve a cold case? Have you gotten any leads? Some things I find unusual, yes, but nothing that hasn't been already noted by famous doctors. Besides, my specialty is in cadaver forensics. I'll need a detective's mind to piece together the entire mystery. Perhaps you might assist me in that sometime soon, Judith, since you're so good at mysteries and all. Mm, that does sound like a good bit of fun. We'll keep that in mind. What's going on with the reenactment club? Becky still won't talk to me. Oh, uh, are you planning on rejoining? Because, to be entirely honest, Lady Judith, I do not believe you will be allowed. I'm just curious about what you're all up to. I see. Well, our next grand reenactment is happening in a few days' time. It will be one of our biggest yet, covering the land and sea battle of Rest Lane on the 25th anniversary of the Onyx Wars beginning. Oh yeah, Grinsby mentions that. And I think she said that non-club students are encouraged to join, since it's so big and educational or something. I know I can't become a club member, but I could probably help out a bit in this one, right? Lady Judith, you know that I cannot approve you or not. You would have to talk with Becky. Have you... have you apologized to her yet? No. Why should I have to? She was the one who started everything. Are you sure her slights against you were reality rather than simply perceived? I know what I saw. I can read people. Not all books are of the same language. Other languages exist, and one person cannot know all of them. As a person who holds precious friendships with the both of you, this continued feud hurts my heart. Pray... Consider taking the first step to end it. Fashion about 500 years out of date. Who thought those pants were a good idea? Diorama of a typical crystal farm from 500 years ago. It's considered good, honest work. But if being honest means no money and a lack of indoor plumbing, I think I'll keep my tongue white with at least a few lies. Gina Wendigan, resident drama kid. She was cast as a fluff bat in an upcoming school play and has been method acting for a month now. Her obsession got even worse when she read through the Warrior Bats books. She thinks they're actually accurate to fluff bat behavior, and now she's declared I'm part of her bat clan. Her antics can be weird, but she's a good friend. I've known her for a long time. Nightclaw Judith, how might I assist? The play's next week, right? Are you excited for all your method acting to finally pay off? We fluff bats have a great appreciation for the arts. I am happy to take part in the play and make my clan proud by representing our warrior hearts. What's going to happen to your fluff bat persona once the play is over? I am a true bat at heart. I don't know what you mean by persona. In another play she was in, she was cast as a janitor, and she cleaned the whole cafeteria. And when she was cast as a tree, she stayed outside and photosynthesized for hours. She's completely dedicated to the bit. Added anything neat to your roost lately? Oh 
Yes, yes. I just added a hammock to sleep from. It's not traditional to my people since they hang from the ceiling with their feet, but it is very comfortable and it's hanging off the ground to keep me safe from predators. Oh, that's right. She needed a hammock because she almost broke her horn when she tried to sleep while hanging from the rafters. A question for you, Nightclaw Judith. I saw you've added a poster of a cyquine man to your roost. Is this because you find him, uh, what's the word in your language? Cute? Gina, come on. I was just a poster for a detective holoreel. I'm not ready to like boys yet. I'm only 13. So, have you finished reading the Warrior Bat series? Thrice over. What? Aren't there like 50 books in the series? It's important for me to know every detail for my Fluffbat cultural studies. Gina, you do know those aren't accurate to real Fluffbats, right? It's a fantasy fiction series. Have you read them? Have you studied anything about Fluffbat behaviour or history? Uh, well, no. Then don't tell me what I do or do not know about my own species. Thank you. Have you finished the paper yet? Naturally. Ha! Huh. Well, uh, I'm just a tad worried about getting it done on time. Especially because I'm just not getting it. Mrs. Grinsby's teaching style is, well... Atrocious. I was going to choose a kinder word, like peculiar? That's the meanest thing I've ever heard coming out of your mouth. <sighs> Well, it's hard for her to teach about a war when she gets queasy over just mentioning death or blood. She's definitely skipping out on some important stuff. Can you summarise the course of the war a bit more clearly for me? Alright, alright. Don't tell me I never did anything for you. The fiefdoms of Northburg and Drakenspire have been at odds for hundreds of years, ever since they were first established by brothers with bad blood between them. Our fiefdom of Drakenspire was known for the production of excellent resonetic augmentation rings. This was due to the high quality ore mined from our territory in the inked wastes. These rings rose our standing with the king, drawing the jealousy of Northburg. Twenty-five years ago, however, Many rings were found to be dangerously faulty, to the point that some who used them lost their resonetic talents altogether. A misinformation campaign was launched that said it was due to Baron Lerick of Drakenspire pursuing cheaper mining in areas with ore tainted by the Surge. Royal investigations were launched. In the meantime, Baron Nayrath of Northburg offered to sell his own rings and provide medical assistance to the affected fiefdoms. The king began to favour Nayrath and granted him the right to mine in the inked wastes. Soon, however, the king's spies revealed the truth. A double agent, supposedly working for Drakenspire, had manipulated documents to direct miners to the tainted areas, making it look like Baron Leoric had ordered it. Once the truth was revealed, tensions between the fiefdoms skyrocketed. Leoric, furious, mobilized his troops and marched upon the inked wastes, intent on taking his minds back. Nayrath sent out troops in response, declaring that he still had legal rights to the land. A battle began. The initial conflict was very bloody, very quickly, since Drakenspire's citizenry were incensed at Nayrath's actions. The fervour of combat led to some of the Northburg miners to be killed in the fray. Since they were civilians, Northburg's soldiers fought back with a similar anger. Meanwhile, the king was mad with Leoric for engaging Nayrath since the investigation was not closed and he'd bypassed royal authority by sending out troops. 
As such, the king did not take sides, leading the fiefdoms to engage in combat exclusively with the other, as other fiefdoms were not permitted to become involved. The war lasted for four years and was fought almost entirely in the inked wastes. The area was already known for its strange, twisted evils, horrid beasts and the infection of the surge on the land, brutal bloodshed, and new types of resonetic weaponry only twisted the place further. One can only be glad we were born after it was all over, eh? Huh. I think I'm getting it a bit more now. Thanks, Judith. No problem. You mentioned resonetic weapons affecting the land. Did those help or hurt the surge? Oh, and what happened to Lord Nerath after the war? This whole unit is going to be about the war. You'll learn that stuff soon enough. And if you don't get it, I'll drill it into your skull, knucklehead. Ha ha. Thanks. Any plans for the treehouse? Yeah, I've got a few sketches I'm working on. I don't know how I'm going to get enough wood or nails to finish my plans, though. Mm, we could take apart the door on Glitter's stable. Or we could dig up her grave and use the coffin. She's an animal made out of stone. She doesn't really need a coffin anyway. Judith! All right, all right. If I come across any, I'll make sure not to tell you where I sourced it from. That's Deacon Vespshire. He's good friends with Lydia, Gina and I. His dad is a pastor in town, which means he's a bit too much of a moralist for my taste, but he's got a sharp tongue at times. He fixed up the old treehouse we use as a clubhouse. Lydia Cabrera, artist and big-time sports fan. She mostly likes paint, but I've seen her make art pieces out of anything she can get her hands on. Both she and I don't get along with the teachers too well, but she has the advantage of being an artist. After all, it's hard to stay too mad at the girl who will draw the school holiday card designs for free. I've known her since last year. Hey, Jay. What's the damage? Banned from film club for a while. Bummer. We just got a copy of Murder in the Depths, too. You did? <sighs> yep. Hopefully they won't return it to town before you see it. Mm, almost makes me regret being such a delinquent. What are you doing? Carbon shock. Wanna help me? Why would I do that? I want to make a whole set of carved chalk to give to David below me on the lake ball team. I think he'd, you know, think it's neat or something. Lydia, David is like four years older than you. Which won't be a problem when he's a famous lake ball star in his mid-twenties. Might as well make sure he knows my name before he gets famous at all. So, are you gonna help me or not? i do it myself, but he's leaving for a game in a few hours and I want to give it to him before then. I don't really want to get my gloves dirty. Can you give me a lunch token in exchange? Ugh, sure. Come on. Fine. Great, here's the knife. Just try to match the three I've already made, okay? Chip off the sides.
things look fine. Fine? Yeah. Here's a lunch token for your time. Treat yourself. Thanks. Nicholas Strumps and Becky Landerhoof. They and I aren't on the best of terms. Becky leads the school's historical reenactment club. She's a real stickler for accuracy, to an obnoxious degree. Nicholas is her boyfriend. He's a nerd about naval history and sea battles and the like. Becky hasn't talked to me in a while. Probably because of what I did at the reenactment. But I only did it because she needed to be taken down a peg. She should have thought of it as a favour, really. Becky? Nicholas? <sighs> what do you want? Nothing. Can't a friend just greet a friend without coming across as needy? Huh, friend. Right. Leave us alone. Nicholas Strumps and Becky Landerhoof. They and I aren't on the best of terms. Becky leads the school's historical reenactment club. She's a real stickler for accuracy, to an obnoxious degree. Nicholas is her boyfriend. He's a nerd about naval history and sea battles and the like. Becky hasn't talked to me in a while. Probably because of what I did at the reenactment. But I only did it because she needed to be taken down a peg. She should have thought of it as a favour, really. A Corvenstone crystal tree. They say that every king or queen is buried under one once they croak. I wonder if a royal is buried under this tree. A king of class clowns, perhaps. Mrs. Grinsby, our history teacher. Bit of an odd duck, that one. She says that about 15 years ago, she was attacked and her horn was snapped off. Now, she uses a wand to channel her waves, but wands aren't the most reliable. She's a nervous wreck of a person. Almost makes me feel sorry for her. Coven, is your paper done? You're scampering about as if it were? Yes, miss. I put it on your desk yesterday. Oh, oh yes, uh, of course. Uh, carry on. Unless you have any questions about future assignments? So, I guess we're in the Onyx War Unit now, huh? How long will we be studying it? Till the end of the semester. It's an incredibly important part of our recent history that affected many aspects of our current day lives and politics. You have a good head for these topics, so I trust you will do well with it. And, uh, um, please, do not include any battlefield photos in your presentations again. You know, I, I haven't the stomach for it. Aha. Uh -huh. Of course, miss. I may not be able to get away with it anymore, but other students will be doing that now. She pays less attention to the actual quality of the presentation, since she's too distracted by her disgust. And after all, she can't very well dock points for accurate visual reporting or historical fact. By the way, miss, 
thought I saw you carrying a big net near the stables yesterday. What was that about? Oh, oh that couldn't have been me, Judith. Why would I have a net? That's what I was wondering. Hence why I asked you. Oh, no. Wasn't me. Is that romance book on your desk part of the curriculum? Hmm? Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, just a little something to read during lunch. Completely school appropriate, I assure you. Teachers need a bit of downtime entertainment too, child. No need to be nosy. Ah, but curiosity is my speciality, miss. Is that not the foundation of learning? No need to be disingenuous, which, coincidentally, is also a speciality of yours. You and I both know you're smart enough to tell the difference between nosy and curious. You flatter me, miss. <sighs> Before I ask them, I should figure out what page number I'm looking for. doesn't sound right. Before I ask them, I should figure out what page number I'm looking for. Bingo! Hello, little guy. I need to find a pre-war history textbook. Maybe from around the 2190s? Thanks. Without further ado... Huh. Interesting. A battle that took place way before the Onyx War, but it still involved Drakenspire and Northburg. This has got to be related to the textbook, but this scene shows a different battle. Though, looking closer at the paint, it seems like this table has been used for years and was painted over whenever a new scene was needed. Platoon... company? Ugh. I don't know how many soldiers those are. Hmm, maybe I'll have to... Ask someone for help.
Leave us alone. Nicholas, I need to ask you something about the military. Huh. Becky, did you hear something? Uh, you know, I am feeling pretty darn hungry today. Maybe, just maybe, if I had an extra lunch token, my ears would clear up. Here's a lunch token. Now spill your guts, war geek. <sighs> Bribing me, I see. <laughs> Fine. What's your question? I need to know how many soldiers are in a patrol, a platoon, and a company. Basic question. Hardly worth a lunch token. But I'll take it anyway. In Drakenspire, the average is 20 men per patrol, 40 men per platoon, and 140 per company. Hmm. Guess the reenactment club can teach useful things sometimes. Rich. Real rich. Buzz off. 